Hey guys, Thomas Lucilli Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Bros. So, if you end up enjoying this full review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my petition to help smaller YouTubers. Second and third will head you over to my Patreon and PayPal, where you can help support me and the channel. And the fourth will help, it, will help you over to my Discord server, where you can help find other YouTubers and communicate and collab and do all that fun stuff. And Schilling will be reminded at the end of the review. So with all that getting out of the way, let's get into the movie Bros. So, when I first saw this trailer, which I've not seen as much as, say, the Smile trailer, to be fair, uh, I was like, okay, this is going to be a gay love story. Haven't seen that in, quite frankly, a long time. Um, I think the, f the, uh, the previous one I had seen was, like, that one where it's, like, the... The gay guy is, like, trying to find his date, and it's, like, a mystery date love story. But I don't remember what that movie was called. If anyone remembers what I'm talking about, you can leave it in the comments. But I think that was the last, like, romantic, quote-unquote romantic story of that nature that I have seen. Uh, and I have also seen in some, uh some interview stuff on via Twitter or other means that this movie hasn't been doing so hot or well in that regard. Uh, now, this is where I gotta be brutally honest. Uh, I think there's two reasons primarily why this movie isn't doing too well. And it's not for the reasons you think I'm probably even gonna say. You're probably already thinking that he's gonna mention, well, it's a gay movie, right? So the you know, this is what the one of the people in the movie said that you know the straight people didn't come to see our movie or whatever. Well, as much as that could potentially be true, I'm not even gonna say that it. Uh, there's no definitive way to not you know to prove that or not. I don't know, but I think the two things that I will say that I think are a disadvantage to this movie was the trailer, actually. First, the trailer didn't play that much. Um, I think I've seen the trailer twice uh, before seeing this movie, and again, comparing that to the movie that I just reviewed just before this, Smile, I've seen that trailer, like, I don't know, ten times before seeing the movie? Uh, so that's pretty substantial in that regard into who's going to be, you know, knowing that your movie even exists in the first place. So there might have been a lack of budget in that regard. The second reason I think this movie didn't catch any interest is, quite frankly, I think the trailer showed a little bit too much. Uh, I'm going to be quite honest with that. Um... I think when it comes to romantic movies in general, and this might be a hard stance that I'm going to take here, even if it, regardless of it's straight or gay or anything in between, I'm going to say it, I think people prefer not to see or know that the romance is happening within the trailer. It's kind of like a, it's sort of like a spoiler, if anything. Uh, people already get irritated by that on other types of movies, like, you know, superhero movies where, like, they reveal all of the action scenes or, like, you know, whatever. Uh, and I do think that that does affect the amount of people that will go see this movie, is that if they see it, they're like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're already a couple, so whatever, you know, uh, that already loses my interest, then that's also a potential loss for your audience as well. But I am here to review this movie as objectively as possible. So, to be clear, this is a gay romantic comedy. Uh, so, you know, I have not reviewed a romantic movie in a, again, a while. And a comedy movie, I don't think I've ever reviewed a comedy in my channel before, or a strict comedy anyway. Um, but this isn't a strict comedy anyways, so we will see how that goes. And, again, we are here to be as objective as possible. So the movie opens up, and I will say, uh, 
This little opening scene is probably not the strongest thing in the world, but it introduces us to our main character named Bobby. Apparently he's in the He's a part of this podcast where he already has 1 million subscribers? I don't already know about that. That seems a little hard-pressed for me to believe, but okay, I'm willing to let that early slide. Uh, especially for an LGBT podcast. Now, to be frank, I think that it's already hard enough to gain... Uh, subscribers here on YouTube, I don't know how much easier it is to gain, you know, to hit against myself, quite frankly, I don't know how easy it is to gain subscribers on a podcast, so maybe it's easier to get subscribers on a podcast. I can't really even say for sure, because it's sure as shit hard on YouTube. I can say that for sure, because you know why? Because the smaller YouTubers don't even have our own page. And you know who's not doing anything about it? Nobody. Not bigger YouTubers, not the CEO of YouTube. Nobody's doing jack shit about it. But here we are, and here I am, still making content, despite the uphill battle that we must face. So, anyways, nitpick aside, uh... He was told about. He was told to explicitly write a rom com. So, so he's also a writer, and he kind of goes on this rant in a way about uh, not being feeling qualified to do so. Uh, and he was also elected to win this sort of pride award at this ceremony. Uh, and he, as he's talking, as he's, uh, you know, doing his speech, he talks about how there aren't many gay love stories. Now, to be clear, that is true. There aren't really that many, to be quite frank. Uh, this is something I have talked about quite abundantly whenever there is a LGBT thing happening, uh... So this movie explicitly talks about that, and again, I I've made it abundantly clear that I have made it very clear that there is LGBT content that has been cut from, like, say, Nickelodeon or, you know, more younger audiences like Cartoon Network and Disney, uh, for those examples, and then there have been earlier examples, say, back way back in the 1990s of, like, well, at least the show that I primarily watched, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, who had a lesbian character in it, for example. So that would be one of the earlier examples that I personally watched. But outside of that, there aren't, again, a lot of gay love stories. Uh, and, uh, he talks about this uh, sort of more ancient-looking picture of two men being relatively close in proximity to each other and um, how this has been established as more of a friendship by historians. Now, to be... This is where things get a little bit wonky for me, though. And, again, I'm being as objective as possible because history... It is a bit harder to tell because, again, we don't have as much evidence, uh, and when we do, it's kind of hard to harder to pass certain elements of that. Um, we really have what we have of history, so you know it's up to us to sort of try to get at what we can get at. So uh, again, I'm not really sure about that one. Anyways, after his little award ceremony, he goes to uh, just have some good old hookup sex. Uh, and he talks about, after having his casual online stranger sex, that it's he's sort of narrating to us about how he has his life where he's having sex with these strangers, and, you know, as to not oppose that to you know, his friends, which he doesn't want to have sex with his friends because they're not gay, obviously. Um, 
So we then cut to a gay sex club. And this is where our couple initially meet. We meet Aaron, who meets with Bobby. And they, we sort of see uh, Bobby sort of kind of poorly flirt with Aaron here. Uh, and Bobby's trying to lay it on a little thick here, trying to get that early on kiss, but he doesn't quite get there. So Bobby leaves. Uh, they start texting each other, where they send each other, where he's trying to send, like, a butt pic. But then he, like, gets, I think this is, like, another guy or something, but he gets blocked. Anyway, um, we cut to this LGBT, uh, historical site that he, uh, our main character Bobby is currently working on. This is his big thing, uh, that he's... His primary job is to, you know, get this thing off the, this building off the ground. So he's talking about his exhibit, and he has in the room uh, one uh, person of each, uh, you know, of the letters in the room. So a lesbian, himself being gay, someone who's bisexual, someone who's transsexual. All of it. Uh, all of the people are in, you know, one of, at least, of these, those are in this one room. And they're trying to argue about who, what should be the last exhibit to be a part of this little, uh, you know, historical site. And they can't come to quite the uh, answer quite yet. Uh, each person goes through their, like, little, uh sort of backlog of uh, what they want to see personally. Um, all the while, uh, Bobby um, and Aaron go out to hang out some more. And this is where they start to talk about some movies. Uh, so, Bobby asks Aaron what's his favorite movie, and he says, The Hangover Part 1. And he says one of the earlier lines in the movie is this whole thing about using the word faggot. And he sort of, uh, you know, says it as this obvious, like, you know, the word, and uh, trying to gauge Aaron's response through this movie's uh, thing, since he posted it, at, or mentioned it as his favorite movie. So, with all of that, uh, Aaron pushes back saying that it's not even his favorite movie and that the word doesn't even bother him. Um, so, they head upstairs and they start kissing along with other pairs. This seems to be their early on sort of a uh, way of sort of correlating what they want in their relationship, I guess, is the best way I can put this. Um, so, uh, he visits, uh, Bobby visits his family, uh, where he has, uh, his, I think his sister and some other relative, I'm not sure who this is, and two other younger uh, individuals there. Uh, they're talking about, pretty openly and candidly, about the relationship stuff while everyone's present. So, pretty open household, apparently. Uh, so, definitely not uh, conservative, if anything. Let's say that for sure. Uh, anyway, um, so he invites Aaron to listen in on one of his future speeches, and Aaron learns that one of his former friends, Josh, just recently came out as gay. Uh, then we cut to the board meeting of the LGBT plus uh, group once more, where they're still trying to deliberate, and they're starting to use this 
they kind of mockingly use the word terrorist to be like, not that person, or like, you know, they're, and they made, they mention like, Caitlyn Jenner here, which is a name I know I've heard before, but I, I can't place it, um, as, as they put it in the movie, a trans terrorist, I don't know what that means, um, but if I think if I were to translate that, it's a transsexual person to whom portrays the thing that they are a part of, question mark? I think that's what they're trying to establish here. Um, and again, I don't know enough about who this Caitlyn Jenner person is, so I'm not, I throw up my hands. I don't know what to tell people. I don't know. Um, anyways, this is where, uh, Bobby meets Deborah from the show Friends. Now, I don't know the per- I don't know the actor from Friends, so I don't know if- I don't know much about this, but anyways, despite that, he starts complaining about his whole relationship to her, and she says- she starts freaking out because she's like, I- Dude, I'm an actress. I get, this is not what I came here to do. I came here to learn about your exhibit, and uh, she sort of just goes off. Uh, so we see Bobby start to hang out with Baron again, and uh, we see them out in the field. Bobby starts to mock Aaron as he's sort of checking out these other guys. Um, and Bobby's still trying to push the relationship, so he gets a little bit more aggressive here uh, while they're out in the field, and the other guys are like, oh, are you guys fighting? And then they start making out, and they're like, oh, all right, you know, whatever. And then they go to their, one of their homes, I forget which one, regardless, they end up having a little bit more, uh, a little bit more kinky sex, let's say. Uh, so, we see that Aaron goes into uh, saying what he wants to do is start to make his little this little chocolate shop I guess is what I'll call it he used to apparently write wills for people um, and we hear Bobby talk about and this is quite the line that Bobby rather be a gay cliche than be miserable and I think that's that's something I actually never really thought about is, you know, as a writer, is like, yeah, when you write a gay character, um, and when we see them in the media, you know, we have now established, you know, the gay cliches that we have seen on TV when we do see them, and, you know, they do tend to be within the framework of, um, that, a bit more flamboyant, a little bit more uh, you know, uppity in that way, in that flamboyant way, I should say, uh, and other cliches of that gay nature, um, and, you know, when you see a person following that, that being Bobby, he says, you know, I'd rather be that cliche than be miserable, and I think that that's something that, uh, really hits an interesting part about this is that's something that I don't think a lot of people really even think about, uh, even myself, to be quite honest. And I think that does come from the writing versus the reality of the world that we live in, is that when we are writing, and this is a little bit of advice for the, the gay slash lesbian audience out there, if you're uh, wanting to write that character, uh, you know, you can go to the cliches, but I do I do think that there is something quite intrinsical, quite interesting to sort of test the waters of that. Test how much of the cliches can you break? How far away can you get away from those and still have the character be well-written and gay at the same time? Uh, it's something that I have definitely tested in my own work in writing, that's for sure. Um, uh, but, anyways, back on the movie, the pair now goes to a place called Provincetown, uh, 
This is where we see Bobby sing in the shower, and uh, Aaron's like, oh, he can sing. Um, and they, the two of them have their little uh, meeting with this super rich guy named Lawrence, and he offers a $5 million thing after uh, Aaron initiates um, his intrigue and in what uh, Lawrence is proposing for his $5 million to be put forth. And boy, do they cut a lot of convenience on that one from that perspective. Five million dollars. It's like, oh, I think I'd be, I think someone as myself would be set for life with five million dollars. With how much I, you know, spend and how things are in my life. I think I'd be set for a good, I think I'd be set. So, you know. That sounds like a lot to me. And this guy just have it. And he's like, yeah, you can have it. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it hurts a little on the inside. Knowing that people can just give that much money away like that. Anyway, we cut to Pride Month. And after Pride Month, we get a little montage of them just hanging out. Doing little, little activities together. And then we cut to the beach. Now this is a thing, a brief moment we I saw in the trailer. And this is where Bobby has with Aaron one of his more, uh, he talks about his own history about being too gay, as he puts it. And he goes on for quite a bit. This is, again, I think the longest stretch of the movie, uh, with his little narration here, and quite frankly, I think it's definitely the strongest part of the film, uh, because we have spent so much time kind of going through these little, like, you know, these little, like, quick snappy, like, jokes about each, you know, uh, representation, or, you know, what they want and desire, and Bobby's relationship, and Aaron's, like, sort of, like, sort of more wavy, part of the relationship, and everything has been sort of moving at a very quick pace, pretty steadily so far, and this is the first part of the movie that really, really slows down, and it does make you really appreciate the rest of the movie, I feel. Uh, I think this is the, the scene, the pivotal scene of the movie, if you will. Uh, and he goes on about how uh, it's sort of sad that it took the world this long to catch up, you know, being comfortable with being gay, being comfortable with being lesbian, being comfortable with being bisexual, being comfortable with being a transsexual, and whatever is addendum into the plus category, because I think there's a few things that are there, um, but I'm, uh, I don't know, it's just, I don't Anyway, uh, and he he talks about, he also mentions how confidence is knowing that you are the only person you can count on. Now, this is a, a stance that he has that I would probably disagree with to a degree, but coming from him, it does make sense. It does seem like that fits into what we've seen of this character so far. Uh... And I think it actually, that does a lot to establish what type of character he is. Um, that being is that he is very clearly someone who has felt like he could only count on himself to make his way through life. Um, and that, that through that sort of lens, this confidence, as he puts it, has found its own manifestation, if you will. And thus we then cut, uh, cut to them making out on the bed. And for the first time in the movie, after their moment on the beach, I felt like this was the first time in the movie where I felt like, okay, they're actually really starting to build their relationship. I mean, everything beforehand seemed like, yeah, we're going to kind of fool around. Yeah, we're going to kind of maybe invite some other guys. Yeah, we're going to kind of do this. But... This is where the move is like, oh, no, no, no. You know, we're going to take a little, little step in the right direction here with these two. 
Um, and again, we cut to another montage of them just hanging out in the holidays. So we have quite a couple of uh, cuts here. Um, but the r r relationship wiggling has not quite ended as we have this more bizarre four-way coupling that they have with two others and um, one of the guys being Steve being the super small guy is just trying to get in there you know he's just trying to invest but he can't quite get in there with these bigger stronger guys um, and uh, after the fact Aaron invites Bobby to another thing uh, and during their little talk, he talks about how, uh, again, sort of going back to this whole, uh, gay thing in media is, is that, yeah, it is sort of a, this weird catch-up thing of, like, homophobia has been around for quite a while now, uh, in the real world, and as we have seen in the, as people in the the conservatives like to call it the woke media. Um, and, you know, how corporations are using it to try to now suddenly heavily market it to, you know, this, this small subset of gay people and those to whom are in support of, well, the overall LGBT plus community. Which apparently, again, I think the the rate of people who are in just, you know, in good vibes with the whole thing is that whole 70%, and then the people who are make up the LGBT plus is still, like, that really small minority of people who are actually within that, within any of those boxes is the last time I checked. Anyway. So, uh... Here we have Bobby and Aaron meeting Aaron's mom and dad. And this is where Aaron to tells Bobby to sort of like hold back on all of the gay stuff. And that really sets him off on this little tangent. Uh, and during their little dinner, we have probably one of the talks that we have yet to clearly have a bridge over in the real world, quite frankly. Uh, that being, how old should kids be to learn about, you know, get, to teach them about gay stuff, or lesbian stuff, or bisexual, you know, all that stuff, right? And the, ki and the mom has the contention that the kids are too young. And that argument Quite frankly, I don't think holds up in the way she, she and, well, let's say it, conser a lot of conservatives like to believe that it does. So, let's get in, let's dig in a little, let's, uh, let's break away from the review and talk about this for a while. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, uh, it's been contested to clearly not teach LGBT stuff in schools. Which I find bizarre, um, already, um, but despite that, in high school, a long time ago, if we, if we use our time machines of history, you'll note that the reason that normal sex ed, straight sex ed, was brought into the schools was explicitly because parents were too uncomfortable teaching their kids, uh, you know, more, or more youthful adults about sex, which is why they introduced it in this way. They were like, leave it to the schools, leave it to the schools. And that was the majority of people in the U.S. So that is what we did. We brought sex ed into the schools. And at first it was kind of, you know, the whole disease thing and all this creepy stuff, and it's sort of has transformed over the years and become 
a lot more transformative over the years, slowly but surely. Uh, but the point is, is that is that is that where we started on the whole normal sex ed talk. Now, I mentioned this before as a proposal to those of those of the more conservative side of this is that if you believe that teaching your kids about LGBT stuff is no good, then during sex ed, which is taught in high school primarily, from what I understand, is to include gay sex with that. I think that is the best compromise you're ever gonna get and no one brings it up except me that I am aware of. But that is not what they are arguing about here. They're talking about just general history seems to be, not necessarily sex ed. So just gay history seems to be the topic of discussion. However, I will say, I will tick away from Bobby's argument, is that I don't think the thing he's talking about, that being a play he was shown where he saw all these uh, other men nude or whatever at the age of 12 was the best example to give based off of just how bizarre that just sounds to even hear in general. So, with that, I don't think that that is the best counter-argument. The argument ought to be, uh, you know, if you're, it, and holding on to the compromise would be, let's teach them the basics at least, right? Gay history is fine. And teach them it's okay to be gay. That's a, that, that alone, I think that's, I don't think that's asking for much. Uh, I don't think that's a, breaking compromise of anything, and if the person in question says, oh, that person who mentions the stuff in general is a groomer, well, I hate to break it to the people who use the word groomer in that way, but that is not what the groomer word originally means. Spoiler alert, groomer initially means to wash someone's hair, whether that be a pet or a horse or a human being. I know that that may shock some of those conservatives, but that is what the word groomer actually means in, in its original definition. Um, so they try to allude to the fact that taking them to these shows of the LGBT variety will make them of the perversion is sort of where they allude the groomer thing to is what, what I'm trying to get at here. And I find it odd that that is the case. Um, seeing how we are fine with, and have been fine with in the US at least, teaching our boys, this is history by the way, teaching our boys that it's perfectly fine to have a child, you know, give a child a soldier, a boy, a soldier, and tell them that it's cool to join the army because that is essentially what a lot of early soldier toy things were designed to do was like initiate boys into joining the army. It's like, hey, you know, fighting for your country is a good thing, but how do we market it to a younger audience? Well, you give them G.I. Joe. And that's what we did. We, you know, the media gave young people G.I. Joe and gave them all the toy soldiers and be like, hey, wouldn't that be cool when you grow up? You can uh, groom. I'm going to just logically expand the word groom because to me, when I hear the word groomer uh, in the context of a conservative, I hear the word teach because teach is what we are actually talking about here. We are teaching kids that gay is okay and that, you know, again, keep it to the basics. That gay is okay, it's okay to have two moms or two dads. Leave it at that at an early age. Just like, apparently, it's okay to teach kids, like, hey, you know, this is this cool little soldier guy. You might want to, one day, when you're older, want to be a cool soldier guy. What's the difference? You tell me what is the difference. It is teaching. 
you just, again, replace the word groomer with teacher. It's equally exchanged. And if you think it ends there, it does not end there. Because for girls, explicitly, we gave them baby dolls. This is history. This is our history. We gave them baby dolls to be like, hey, women, uh, in general, you ought to think about being a mom. Huh. So it's okay to teach girls about straight sex, but not include the word sex. You just, that's the only word you are removing from the dictionary of a young youth's mind, is the sex art. But it is okay to be a mom. So we're gearing up their minds in that way. We're getting them to think in that way. We're grooming them to be in that way. We're teaching them to be in that way. Just like we are teaching them uh, that it is okay to be gay and that they may also have a gay parent, that there are gay parents in the world and that there are gay uh, or lesbian parents in the world and so on and so forth. It seems to simultaneously exist across all levels of teaching, but we have replaced the word teaching with groomer because that is, that helps the conservatives teach other conservatives that it is not okay to do all of these things, but in a secretive way to keep their stuff up in the up without, you know, coming across as homophobic. So there's my long tangent and hopefully you've learned something here about, uh, all this conservative and progressive stuff along the way. Anyways, long tangent about that aside. So, uh, Bobby gets a little frustrated when he sees Aaron kiss another guy. Uh, and he's like, now he's yelling at him, because, um... And he's also mentioning this code that, you know, how Aaron told him earlier to be less of himself. Uh, through his frustration, Bobby attempts to destroy his own museum, but the others that work there stop him. Uh, and through further frustrations, however, Bobby does perceive to try to put on a persona of what he thinks Aaron wants, uh, and manages to get with this other guy, uh, completely unrelated. So they are both, you know, he, he he's now flaking... Uh, Aaron was at this point, and now Bobby is doing uh, something, you know, conceivably worse through being hurt in that way. But they meet at the club after the fact, and they make up and kiss anyways, despite all of that. Uh, however, Bobby says this, this doesn't still feel like enough. For Bobby, though, at this point in time. Uh, and in a roundabout way, this is where Aaron initially starts to say that he's actually starting to fall in love with Bobby. Uh, but it doesn't end quite well, as every ro romantic comedy has that low point. If, for those of you who don't know, the uh, sort of the rhythm of a romantic story is that every romantic story has that, you know, that swing downward momentum where it's like, oh, they're in the low pits, they just broke up or something, you know. It happens in, it's a, a well, to go back to the word, it's a cliche of romance movies in general. Uh, anyways, uh, Bobby, go, uh, we cut back to him in his uh, HQ. Uh, talking to, giving a speech about, uh, what, you know, what's been going on, and, uh, his little speech gets posted online by one of the others who works there. Uh, and we see that Aaron starts to make chocolate, as he m mentioned how he wanted to open up that shop earlier. And we see Aaron then playing with his brother in Mortal Kombat. Um... So Bobby is also uh, simultaneously talking with his own family and uh, about wanting to see if he wanted to take Aaron back. Uh, we see that Aaron is then elated to even get a text from Bobby. 
um, Bobby has a little speech where he says he's tired of uh, gay people being, or, you know, it's a little bit uh, odd or whatever, whatever word he uses here, uh, to see gays being played by straights. Now, for those of you who don't know what that's referring to, I think that's a direct ref uh, more of a direct reference, and I don't know how many other films do this, but it's um, the immediate film I think that is referring to is Brokeback Mountain, uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal and um, I forget the other actor um, that those two are in a gay romance, but the actors who play them are straight, essentially, is the... Uh, thing there. So, uh, we see Bobby sing a song that he wrote for Aaron, and he goes to kiss Aaron. And we see these little, uh, as they are sort of heading through this museum that is now opened up uh, at this point, uh, these little holograms that seem to be like these little cameo appearances by certain individuals. Uh, and they make, uh, or Bobby proposes that they date each other for three months through a wedding ring or a ring in general, but they, they so, sort of pass it as this, um, again, this three-month trial period, I guess I'll call it. So we cut to three months later, where we see uh, Bobby and uh, Aaron at the museum that Bobby works at, and the mom bringing a uh, a school trip of young students to the museum to teach them about gay history. Which, again, I think would fall under the preview and be like, hey, you know, there are gay people in history, that's true enough. Uh, and that doesn't, that doesn't dictate or translate to sex necessarily, so that ought to be fine. Again, you're not you're not jumping to that step yet. So I think that ought to be fine uh, under the conditions I already established earlier in my little talk about what should, you know, when should people learn stuff or whatever. Anyway, uh, so Aaron then teases Bobby about wanting to have kids as the two head off into the streets. Uh, I guess still in still getting past the three month period and still being together and that is the movie bros and i will say despite the early segment of the movie which i felt like was a little bit wonky admittedly again this is me being objective here i do think that the movie does pick up in a legitimate way and i think that the beach scene really is the scene that sells the entire movie. I think that is the absolute crux of the thing you needed to, in this movie, is that one moment in the movie where it's like, no, 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 let's slow down, let's have a real moment here with the characters. Um, and I think that that pacing was really necessary for this type of movie, because I do think that... Again, the earlier segments of the movie were very, very fast, and there were these little, you know, little tackles at jokes, and there were these, like, really different types of relationships happening all over the place, and nothing was really getting, you know, hard confirmed or anything, and, you know, it was, through, through that, it, was, it felt like the movie itself was being a little bit, like, loose in its, you know, what it wanted to be, and then... That scene happens at the beach, and it's like, no, 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 let's slow down, let's really consider the relationship stuff. Um, and I feel like that makes the other elements of this movie significantly stronger for it. I do think that the sex stuff after the fact of, like, um, the four-way scene after, the slow scene, I think that should have been reversed. I think the beach scene should have happened after the the little four-way scene or whatever. I feel like, and this, again, I think this falls under the structure of it, I think it would have made a lot more sense for, again, from a movie structure standpoint to be like, 
they're in this, you know, relationship where they're, like, sort of messing around with other guys, and they're, you know, they're just being loose and whatever, and, you know, and then have the scene of the far away happening here as well, earlier in the movie, because it really does feel like the beach scene, comparatively speaking, is the scene where they start to take their, is where they start to take their relationship seriously. So for them to go to take their relationship seriously, to almost fall backwards on the relationships where it's like a, li a bit more loose and, you know, whatever. It's, again, it seems like from a movie perspective, backwards, you're, you're, you're back pacing and it, it doesn't, it doesn't bode well in terms of just a series of events <clears throat> that tells a a coherent story between a, rela a a love relationship story. Um, I don't know. I think the whole uh, sleeping with another guy thing too seems to be a little bit weird. Um, again, happening after the fact, but that does tie into the whole the harder like. You know, the cliche of, like, oh, the relationship low point. So, I think that's... I don't know. It's hard to say. But I do think that at least one of those things needed to be flipped. Or put earlier. And one thing needed to be put later. Outside of a little bit of order uh, misfunction in this movie. I do think that overall, I would say it was, it, it's still objectively a good movie. Um... And if I were to give it a score, an objective score, I think I would have to stem it at a 6 out of 10. And again, that 6 out of 10 comes from, it's still a strong movie, a movie in general, but the flaws in it are a little bit more transparent. They're a little bit more of, you need to rearrange some events in the movie, clearly, as well as... Uh, set the pacing a little in the beginning of the movie a little bit uh, as well. And I think once you... I think if the movie had done those two elements, I think this movie would have been even only stronger as a result of those two things. But as is, again, I still think that this is a pretty good damn movie. So, uh... I know recommendate, recommending it probably will be a challenge, considering uh, the current climate of the world we live in, where we have, a, but, at least in media, is a split between people who use the word woke to refer to LGBT and diversity, and those who view, and those to who don't do that, which it, it would include myself, as I am in the don't do that category. Um, I am stringent on if a thing has diversity, or if it's under the LGBT umbrella, then it must or ought to be well written. That has nothing to do with being woke. Um, that, and, and that also includes diversity. If it's well written, I don't care, you know, what you are trying to betray, as long as it's well written. That is my, that is my solid line. If you're gonna be shit, well, you know, shit, even if you are LGBT, or even if you are diverse, if it's shit, it's shit. Point blank. I have said many a times that there are a lot of LGBT stories that aren't really that good. I can just point to one, an obvious one. And here I go, I'll do it. The Legend of Korra, it's not good. The story we get is, you know, they kiss at the end. It's like, that's not good LGBT representation. That's not well done. You didn't earn that at all. Their relationship beforehand, there was nothing to set that up. There was nothing there, and you made it a thing anyway. Just to make it a thing. That's not good. Don't do that, do better be objectively better. Go for the hell of a boss route. Even that's better by a landslide. Um, you know, Stolas and um, Blitz 
as an example. There's already a lot more to chew on with that. Um, but point being is that, again, I am not one to use the words of wokeness to be like, well, it's bad because it is woke. That is not a good defense of, or a good criticism, I should say. I should say, if it is of a diverse, you know, diverse range, including LGBT, if it's good, well written, then it's well written. If it's not, then I will argue that it is not based on uh, very basic material, you know. And we you cut it back to the basics. How well rounded are the characters? How are they interacting with each other? What's the story like? What's the progression like? All that stuff. Anyways, sorry for the slight rant there, but uh, I suppose a movie like this is going to likely uh, get that response out of certain people. So, with that again, 6 out of 10. Needed a little bit of a, a little bit of more work in the oven, I suppose is the way I'll put it. But that is my full review of the movie Bros. And if you ended up enjoying this full review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out my links in the description. One will head you over to my petition, second and third will head you to my Patreon and PayPal, and fourth to my Discord server. Any and all donations to my Patreon and PayPal are greatly appreciated and help support me and the channel. And until next time, everyone, bye bye